All right, everyone, it is time for a um, spontaneous, non-scripted video again, even though they tend to sometimes take a little bit longer because the text isn't so tight when there is no script. But I just had an idea about an experiment and I just decided that it would be kind of cool if everyone was with me during this experiment. So the idea of this, the idea of this experiment is that Bitwig has a frequency shifter, which sounds like this. And Andrew Riemann, who made the infamous spectral suit, has a frequency shifter that sounds like this. Now, we could already hear a little bit of a difference. The modulation sounds better in the Bitwig frequency shifter. And the reason for that is because Andrew Riemann uses the FFT algorithm to do all of the things that he does in plugins. Because it's the spectral suit, you know? And uh, yeah, making FFT kind of things modulate well is a bit of work, which apparently Andrew Riemann wasn't in the mood for when it comes to frequency shifter. I wanna test something different, not the modulatability of the plugins, but what is the actual difference in sound like? I wanna find that out because I wanna see if there are use cases to FFT based frequency shifters in general. Like what is the kind of situation in which you wanna use an FFT based frequency shifter over another one? My idea was, I take this frequency shifter and layer it with a Riemann one and then use a polarity flip to kind of cancel them out against each other and then look at the spectrum like what is the difference but unfortunately flipping the polarity does not make it quieter at all so it doesn't seem to be the right approach here gladly though when you just play it back the way it is you can hear some sort of phasing artifacts the more they differ so you don't really have to cancel them out to hear the difference So I basically tweaked those two effects to fit to each other very well. You know, this has a range of minus 500 to 500 Hertz and this frequency shifter has a bigger range. But when I put it on exactly 519, it seems to work as good as possible with the Andrew Riemann frequency shifter. In a different video that I've made before, I should probably link it in the description, I checked out multiple frequency shifters and one of them had some wrong calculations that made it sound different, even though it was still the same algorithm completely. And all of the other frequency shifters were accurate to each other. So I'm pretty sure that the Bitwig one, which was also one of them, is correct here and that Andrew Riemann's frequency shifter is a little bit off. And that wouldn't be surprising to me because it's like no one else is making FFT based frequency shifters and if you're making a little mistake in there it can happen that no one notices uh, until now that someone makes an experiment. Uh, but the real question here is not how accurate this frequency shifter is or how modulatable it is but what can I do with this additional parameter here the FFT size because you know oftentimes when you're using a frequency shifter you are not interested in frequency shifting something in a very specific frequency but just somewhere where it sounds good to you and that's why this is now the end of us listening to the Bitwig frequency shifter together with the Riemann one and just listening to the differences in FFT size on this sound. Wow, this one sounds very different. What? Now this was already very different. The 8000 one even has a different tonality to it than the 2000 and 1000 one, which sounded very similar. And the 4000 one sounded like it was kind of behind some sort of curtain. very inconsistent things that are happening here.
Now this is also interesting. 8,000 and 16,000 sound almost the same on this particular sound, but 8,000 actually sounds fuller and has a bit more volume, which is unusual because typically when you increase the FFT size of FFT based processors, you get a, a very full sound that just lacks transients, but at least it has a lot of ambience and fullness, but not in this frequency shifter. Okay, so no, God, let's go back. The this these higher latencies they are not compatible with Bitwig because Bitwig has a maximum latency of two seconds, and things can seriously go wrong when you try to exceed that. Oftentimes the audio engine just breaks. So let's not do that. But these ones, they are all very different, barely comparable. Let's take this one because it had the most beautiful sound and try to match it with Bitwig's time domain frequency shifter. Now I was actually able to put it to exactly 500 hertz. Yep. Pretty cool, and now actually pretty much the same sound, right? No, not quite. It's different in volume, but also different in sound, I think. Let's match the volume. I don't know, but I think that this one sounds kind of cleaner in some way. And that's unexpected because FFT things often sound a bit wobbled, but the wobbled sounds that we hear in the background are probably coming from the effects on those tracks rather than the FFT-ness of this plug-in here. We can also change the FFT style in this menu from default to PVOC. This has crashed a few times for me before, that's why I usually avoid it, but I want to find out what the sound is like now. That was already more like it, more like something that I would have expected from different FFT sizes, where the bigger sizes are for the longer sustained sounds. And somewhere in the center with 4000, you get something that sounds a little bit like, like a flute or something. I could actually imagine layering that with a dry signal of this sound, maybe if the tonality is good. Let's remove Bitwig now. Gotta say, the tonality does not really fit, does make it sound a little bit too chaotic. Let's try different frequencies though with this sound. Oh, the modulatability actually works with this algorithm very well. Now this is also interesting, on 0 hertz nothing at all should happen, but the algorithm is still doing something. What does it feel like to layer that with dry? Okay, so, okay, we have already found out that we can use the frequency shifter without using the frequency shifter. That is great. Maybe I keep this instance here for later. I might just use this sound. But let's try actually frequency shifting up. What? Why is it lagging now? Oh, I changed the wrong one. This one was supposed to stay on zero. Holy shit. Oh, 
Okay, it crashed. But did I get sounds? I so did. Okay, cool, cool. I mean, that's what I was talking about when I said that this algorithm doesn't always work for me, unfortunately. I will copy that to my desktop. I will use it later, I guess. And I also will refrain from using this algorithm. For now, at least. I'm not saying it's bad, but I tend to use it more in situations where I immediately bounce what I'm hearing. And here I cannot go that way because I have to keep these notes and stuff for now. That's why I cannot enjoy this algorithm a lot, but it is there and it does seem to make a difference to frequency shifters. And I would like to know your opinion, how we can use FFT based frequency shifters to make a difference to normal frequency shifters. Yeah, that would be kind of a cool thing to discuss because like, I still have no idea actually. There was this pan flute kind of sound, but just because of the algorithm of the FFT alternative thingy, not exactly because of the frequency shifter, and the frequency shifter itself, it sounded a little bit different. But maybe it was just because you couldn't really 100% match the frequency. It's a bit unclear. 